in physics, you always learn the special cases first, and then you graduate to the general case, and that has happened here. Linear and circular light, and I'm leaving out the word polarized, you know what I mean. Linear and circular light are special cases of elliptical polarization. So by elliptical polarization, really mathematically what that means is that E naught X may not equal E naught Y, like it does to make those nice circles, and delta phi can be anything. It's not always zero, and it's not always pi over two. So let's write the Jones vector for elliptical polarization. Well, it's easy to write the Jones vector, you just include everything. Um, oh, I don't want to write the E for you. <laughs> we just write the Jones vector. So it's going to be E naught X E to the J phi X over E naught Y E to the J phi Y, like that. So that's a big, ugly, complicated thing. The one thing we could do to simplify it is we could pull this thing down here. We could basically divide both terms by e to the j phi x. With Jones vectors, you can always divide something out of both of them and pull it out and then ignore it. That's always allowed. Because if you do it to one, it always affects the other one. So for example, if we pulled out e to the j phi x, then this basically becomes some real number over e naught y e to the j phi y minus phi x. So you can do that. So you can write this equivalently. You can do something like that to make the top part real, A, and make the bottom part complex, a little b, e to the j epsilon. We'll call it epsilon. Um, where epsilon, in this case, Oh, I'm writing it that way. Eh, let's not write it. I like this epsilon. What's the difference? I don't know. Where epsilon equals phi. In this case, I divided it out. It's y minus x. Sorry. I'm switching the order on you a little bit. You'll survive. Okay. But there's one more thing you could do to simplify it. If you can write it like that, you can write it like this. If this is a real number, it's just a real number, A. And if this is a complex number, well, you can use Euler's theorem to convert that to the more of the complex form we like, b plus j times c. And then you can describe this elliptical polarization with three numbers, a, b, and c. You could do a little b epsilon, but we tend to want to get it like this for, for, um, uh, for Jones form, Jones vectors. So this is elliptical. And it is, by the way, going to rotate counterclockwise. And that's not intuitively obvious, but you can tell that because the complex part is positive. So if you think back to the circular forms of light, when it was a positive J in the bottom, it went LCP. So now it's going to go counter, kind of like LCP, just in a weird pattern. A weird pattern that looks something like this. Let me draw it here. So general circularly or elliptical light might look something like this and I'm going to draw a box first that goes kind of like that it doesn't do this this is just a box to aid the drawing and um, oh it will do something like oh that was really good something like this okay. where this ellipse is at some angle alpha, it's, it's, it's sort of long axis is elevated off the x-axis at some angle alpha. It hits some maximum value, E naught y, which is supposed to hit over here, and it hits some maximum value, E naught x, which happens also a little bit um, off the axis, okay? So what we want to do is find the link between E naught y, E naught x, and alpha, and a, b, and c. Because then you have a formalism that's useful in Jones calculus. 
and you have the actual physical parameters. What's the amplitude? How far off axis is it? So let's find those links. The first one you can do. E not x is A. Right? This thing is made up of an, a horizontal component and a y component, and they have different amplitudes and they're out of phase, but the horizontal component is this component, and its amplitude is A, and we define its phase to be zero. That's the easy one. I'll do that one. I'll leave you to do the other ones. The other ones aren't really something we want to do. It's lots of trig and geometry and weird stuff goes on. Um, e not y is not that hard to get to. It's a square root of b squared plus c squared. I guess that one's actually not hard because it's just the magnitude of this, right? Square root of b squared uh, and c squared. b plus jc times b minus jc under the square root uh, squared. And then epsilon actually isn't that hard to get to. It is the inverse tangent uh, b over c or c over, uh, is uh, b, c over b, sorry, c over b. And that's your phase difference. And this, this time in terms of y minus x instead of x minus y. And then alpha, this is the hard one. I'm going to pick up my notes and reveal that I do look at notes. It is one half of the inverse tangent of 2 e naught x e naught y cosine of the phase difference over e naught x squared minus e naught y squared. And that's the one that's a little hard to get. And we don't want to spend our time because it's mostly geometry. Okay? So that is the most general description of light. This is the most general polarized state. Linear light is a special case where this is all zero and it's just A, or this is zero and this is all real. Circular light is a special case where this is pi over two, which makes everything come out simpler. But the general case is some elliptical shape at some angle.